Having introduced you to some of the basic editing tools in Pro Tools, uh, I want to move on to show you a bit of kind of practical um, practical use of those. Uh, so, uh, one of the obviously one of the most important things you're going to be doing in your sequencing package is editing, um, and that may well be, for example, if you are you're working with a series of takes that you've made in the studio and you want to um, choose the best of those and it may be that the best of those uh, different sections of the piece you'll want to kind of splice together. Um, <clears throat> so you're going you're gonna to need certain skills in order to be able to do that. Now one thing I have noticed in um, a, a few years of, of teaching this course and even up to the third year which is really not very good at all and there are some students who are still not, you know, who are still fairly lazy when it comes to editing and making sure that there are no clicks in your files. It is so important as a professional musician or a professional studio uh, musician to be able to work with, um, to work with a sequencer in, a, in you know, and, and make sure you have a a, a clean mix which does not contain clicks, does not contain glitches, and so on. Um, and it really is your responsibility to make sure that doesn't happen. <clears throat> so editing, you know, good quality editing is, is very important. Um, so there's a, a little exercise on, uh, on which you will have the sound files for. Uh, you can find them online. Um, and they are the, they make use of these Chopin preludes and the Debussy image that you will uh, you will have heard me playing in a couple of previous exercises. Um, I've made some additional regions here, which I'm just going to get rid of. Um, if you press, you'll be able to follow the key commands as I do this. But if you find you've got a load of clutter in your region list, um, if you press uh, Command and Shift and B, that's also in the Edit menu, and um, it's a clear. Um, oh, sorry, I beg your pardon, I think it's in the region list. But you saw the key command that I used. Um, and then you can remove those uh, extraneous files um, and, and get rid of them. <coughs> so the first one uh, is at the top. It's the uh, Incidentally, these are not mine. I should uh, point out that they are... Uh, <coughs> they were done by uh, Simon Hall, um, who was a former colleague of mine. And... Uh, I found them very useful, and he said, "By all means, use them." So I am using them. Um, these. So we'll start with the first one, Chopin Prelude 21, and drag that into the track. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and play you a little bit of this, and you will hear that there are problems with the file. The first one is that there is an enormous lead-in time, which is really unnecessary for this track. So it starts again. Hopefully, you can hear the. Uh, the playback satisfactorily. Uh, again, the speakers are on the other side of the room. So. First problem. Now, obviously, this this was a, a, originally a professional recording, so these problems have been artificially introduced, uh, but they they work rather well as an exercise. So there's one gap there, and another gap there, and so on. So there are a variety of these little, um, stop that there, there are a variety of these introduced gaps which uh, it, your task is to uh, remove so that you will have uh, a seamless track once more. Uh, so we will, I'll look at doing that for, um, for now. Um, and in the process of doing that, we'll, we'll come across some extra editing tools and techniques which we haven't let, yet looked at, which are obviously applicable to Pro Tools and um, would also be, you know, be applicable to any other sequencing packaging package that you use. So if you do want to work on this within a different sequencing package, obviously by all means do. Uh, I do think it's a good exercise to do. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is to... Uh, increase the size of my track because I want to be able to see what's going on in more detail. Now before I showed you how to do it um, using the uh, this drop-down menu of 
uh, with a list of possible sizes. Now, I'm not going to do that, I'm going to use this, uh, if you hover the cursor at the bottom of the track um, and then drag it down, then you reveal more of that track. So um, that's worth trying out. Uh, and then I'm going to use the horizontal zoom, zoom, out, uh, zoom in. And for this first lead-in time problem, I'm simply going to use the trim tool to get rid of it. And I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of it right up to the first note. Now, that may not be appropriate for the kind of track that you have to be working on. Um, it's a question of preference and um, uh, perhaps it might be worth you listening to a variety of tracks in the style of the piece that you're working on to establish how long the lead-in time to a track should be. Uh, in a classical recording such as this, quite often it's appropriate to leave a little bit of time because you will have the ambience of the room that you would have recorded, uh, which you might well want to um, sort of have gradually introduced before the first note of the piece that's going to be played. But that, that's, um, that's something that, that perhaps can be discussed. Um, in class. So having chopped off the beginning, um, I'm going to use the grabber tool to drag the track right back to zero time um, and obviously the uh, piece starts right from, from zero. <clears throat> so that's one problem taken care of. Um, one thing which I, I'm going to point out now because I haven't done yet uh, is I showed you all of these uh, these tools, which um, uh, the grabber, the selector, and trim. I noticed that I I omitted a couple, which I will point out to you now. The first the first is is kind of a combination tool. If you use the smart tool, uh, Pro Tools interprets where you have the cursor intelligently uh, and gives you the appropriate tool for wherever you happen to be hovering your cursor. So if I, if I turn that on and then I put my cursor in the top, this is in my stereo channel, although it works in a mono channel as well, so the, the top half of that channel will give you a, uh, a select tool. Um, so it will, it will behave just as it would with you know, select selected in the, um, uh, in the tools menu. If I go to the bottom half of the, that uh, track, then it flicks over to a grabber, um, and I and obviously operates as a grabber would in that context. If I move to the edge of my region, again at the bottom half of the screen, I get the trim tool, and if I move to the top half of the screen, I think if I'm right, yes, we, we flick to, in fact, the top quarter of the screen, we get a fade-in tool. Now it really is up to you as to whether you find this useful. It may well be that it 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 kind of makes your your working process more fluid, in which case great. Sometimes I find it a little bit annoying because I don't like software that second guesses me. Um, but so I'm going to turn that off. But just so that you know that it's there, you might well find it useful. The second tool which I haven't yet introduced is the scrubber tool, um, and this one you can use to it, it essentially works like if, if you imagine an old analog tape machine, uh, you have you draw the tape at, uh, slower over the playback head. Um, it will you, you can you can hear certain things. Obviously, it plays back at a lower uh, pitch. Um, well, I can just demonstrate. So as I drag over the the track, I can I can move backwards and forwards. And that's very useful for finding certain problem areas within your audio. So if I move forward to where I've got my glitch, if it wasn't so obvious, which of course it is, um, if I, I could use that to hear where the problem is. And that can be handy. There, there isn't much of a click there, actually, but where there is a click, it's very useful for identifying it because you will hear that click very, very clearly uh, where the scrubber moves over the uh, discontinuity. Um, so, um, again, two little tools which, which could be useful to you. 